Hello everybody, my name is Hofstad and welcome to another tutorial for Gary Grooves' War in the West. Today I'll be covering everything you need to know about ground combat. This will include the tow, um, HQ support, and general unit maintenance. Well, not really maintenance, but we'll get to oh, get the drift. Okay, first off, let's talk about combat value in its most basic form. Combat value is the raw value either of a single unit's capabilities is in regards to attack or defense. This is indicated by a number here and here. If you select another unit in a stack, it will be represented by, by a different number, as you can see it changing. Now, <clears throat> the combat value is, repre is represented, or well not represented, uh, comprised of several things. The one of the most important of these is the tow or table of equipment and organization. The table of equipment and organization is essentially a a, 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 uh, a representation of the amount of of logistical support and men inside a unit. First off, you have the how much it should have, then how much it actually has. As you can see, 11 to 9, 272, 24, represented by the percentage of what is or what it actually has. Up here is your combat value, which is again represented by this, which it could show you what it is versus what it could be if every condition was idealized but of course every con there is n there is no way in hell that is ever actually going to happen <clears throat> now and in the really in a rough sense to get an idea of an enemy's combat value you can click on a unit and click on an enemy's hex or well, not click but hover and over an enemy's hex this will give you a, you can see down at the bottom of that green thing there, it's two combat values. Attack of 9.8 and defense of 9.8. This is very simple. Be these two values are the same because it is in a clear hex with... Oh, look at that. It has fortifications there. No, I'm not sure why. It's, it's heavily randomized at times. Now, <clears throat> basically in idealized conditions, if it was two units in two clear hexes with no support, the one with the higher combat value will most, in pretty much all cases, win. However, again, this will most, li most likely not happen. Now, let's talk about what, ha what happens in a battle to change combat values. Let's uh, do an attack. First off, there are two types of attacks in the game. Hasty and Deliberate. Hasty is an attack which uses minimal movement points, but however, it also exhibits or, um, only half the prescribed combat value. If you do a full full attack, it will use a lot up a lot of movement points, but it will be at full power. Now, this unit has a combat value of essentially five. Now, we can now let's do a hasty attack. No, no, no. We'll do a deliberate attack on here and see what happens. Now, let's see what actually happened in that battle. It's this one. Up here, you can see all the details of what happened inside that battle. As you can see, the enemy lost absolutely nothing. We lost 511, one, 500 soldiers, one gun, and two tanks. Now. This is actually kind of fucked up right here, because in this battle, the enemy only had one unit here, but we had several going inside this battle with support from Tactical Air. In general info, we can see six units with five support units coming in from other HQs, but why did we actually lose? I don't know, I can't really tell at this point. It's a bit of a spreadsheet. Oh, that's why. It's because of the fortification value. <clears throat> they had a fort level of 3, meaning they are in a ex heavy degree of um, fortification, which increases their combat value to a massive degree. The reason why we lost, we can see up here in their support units. It's because there were no engineers attached. Now, what are engineers, you ask? Engineers are a support unit. Now. Let's go back. Now, to assign support units. Let's... where was that unit? 
units. Ah, uh, that one. As you can see, this has no support units. You can go and assign support units up here. And you can see a list of support units. Now, <clears throat> every single support unit here has a combat value. Um, can we see what it is? Um, let's have a look. Oh, we assign that. Yep, it raised up. There we go. Oh, wait, what was it? Yep, it gave an uh, extra combat value of 3, but we modify a little bit. Anti-tank. And engineer. Now, when you're attacking a hex or high fortification, when you press this button, you can see the fortification level here. Engineer units directly attached to a unit will be able to attack this fortification. And this will be, this will uh, give a fractional chance of taking down the fortification level by one or two or however. So, <clears throat> also important to note, when you atta are attacking one of these things, artillery units are extremely helpful. Artillery based the increases the engineer value of taking down the fortification level. So if you want to purely attack one fortification level, ideally you want to have a lot of engineers and artillery to take down that level and then bring up some units with tank and other base CV increasing things to bring it to finally bring that fucker down. Now let's talk let's talk about rivers. Rivers are essentially a, a, a nightmare. You can... Inc <clears throat> I think engineers can reduce the penalty that attacking across the rivers does, but I'm not too sure. Let's have a go at it. Does this have engineer units? Let's attach two engineers and one artillery. Bring up these two, and do a deliberate. Yep, and it was reduced down to one, but they still managed to hold because attack a combat value. Oh my god! <clears throat> there are a lot of things that go into bells, but oh, one thing important to note that it is in in an attacking. Now, support units uh, in higher HQs are dictated by their community value, by their range, and by the initiative of their leaders. Now, these two units here were commanded... <clears throat> yep, each of them was commanded by these two. Let's take a look at their leaders. This one has an initiative of 5, which is craptacular. This one has an initiative of... Six, a little bit, still craftacular. Well, not craftacular, but it's decent. Basically, this means they're not going to commit that many units to a attack. When you, leaders with a high initiative are able to commit more units, essentially. Now, let's see if we can find a place that doesn't have a massive fortification level. Uh, they're too weak. This is the bulge of the Ryan scenario, so it's a little bit ew. I can't remember how I did this. Ah, oh, yep, yeah, let's do it with these. Let's see what they have. These will have values. Now, this is going to give... This should work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Of course it wouldn't. Defending forces held. You can see up here the... Com oh my god. <clears throat> up here, you can see the total amount of combat values. As you can tell, this didn't exactly have a high combat value to begin with, 542 to 778. So even if, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if this is considered when bringing up this value here. But if it's not, then we will have lost anyway, because this is only 542 to 778. And now this one is down, minus 300. Yeah. Fortification can screw you over a lot because it essentially multiplies the value. And it did not help that these units don't have any engineer squads at all. 
Yeah, not a single one of them has a friggin' engineer squad, so they, they didn't really have a hope in hell of taking him out. And then he buggers off because he was weakened and we assigned a whole mass of units. Let's look at that bell again. No. Defending forces held? How would change? I don't know how to change. Ugh, God damn it. What's over here? That's enemy attacks. Uh, let's, let's do something over here. Now we can examine this battle. 3.4 to 1. Yep, we had a lot more units than them. But they had a low... Ooh, they had a value 3. Do we have engineers in these? It's very important to check for engineers first before attacking a fortified area. No, then maybe someone committed the engineers. Who are these guys? No. What the hell? Let's go back and see what was actually committed. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> the XV US Corps, um, the, the the one over here, committed two engineer units. That means that's why they were able to take down the the value. They also had a fair bit of field, two units of field artillery. And these did not have much. This, these guys did not have much artillery at all to begin with. Because <clears throat> if if a unit in an enemy combat zone has a lot of field artillery, artillery, their field artillery value is multiplied by a lot. This is because they're safe and in a single spot. However, <clears throat> if this does not apply for any reserve artillery that is coming in to help. It has to be inside that fortified hex for it to be multiplied. That is basically for anybody doing a defending defending role. Now, let's talk about... Let's show reserve units. Do we have any reserves around here? Oh, can we bring a... Experience, supplies, fuel, ammo units... Oh, wait, units attached. Morale. Okay, well, combat is very, very abstracted in this game. It's very hard to tell what is going on because even if you do have a lot going on for your unit, it has good support, it has a high initiative value or a high infantry and mechanized value. Oh, something to mention. Me mechanized infantry values are basically uh, a bonus set gives for um, the type of units. For instance, this guy is only good for infantry, so you'd mainly want to use infantry to him. If you have a guy with a high with a high armor rating, it would be a good idea to attach a lot, as many as many armor units as you can to him. That way, he will be able to give a large bonus when attacking. And the same goes for any infantry. Now, I'm not happy with how my tutorial is going because it's very hard to, 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 to uh, describe everything that is happening inside a combat situation. I'm just looking over the manual now, see if there's anything to go over. So give me a second. Uh, page 131. <sighs> Fortification levels, we went through that. Combat units. So, just give me a second. Support unit, support unit commitment. Let's talk about reserves for a second. 
If you have an incredibly weak unit, let's say someone with only like one combat value, you can move them over here. And let's say all these were in the same core. You could commit put there, yeah, put him as a reserve. If he passes a check when in a an attack, he will be able to be able to join in on this attack. Well, let's see if that'll work. Fort level reduced by one, defending pulse is held. Important thing to note, 1.5 to 1, you only manage to push back an attack if if the value is 2.0, if the ratio is 2.0 to 1. That's the only time when, it, when a defending unit will retreat. Ugh. Yeah. When it comes to attacking across rivers, artillery is something that's good because when you do attack across the river, your units will be subjected to a disruption check to see how badly the the unit will be screwed when attacking across the river. Artillery, however, does not go through this check, so it can basically keep going and doing whatever it wants. There we go. I think we might. Yep. Nah. Oh, what are my dogs doing? The cool thing about res having reserves, though, did they did they actually go through? I think they did. No. Okay. Look, this tutorial is really quite s sucky. I'm really not happy with it, but hopefully you learned something. The manual can explain this section a lot better than I can because all of this is heavily abstracted and most of what I'm trying to explain isn't really shown that well inside the the interface. So hopefully you learned something, but I'm not all that happy with it, so please don't be too pissed because it's kind of shit. Okay. Alright, see ya.